Amazing Gospel with Deaconess Victoria is a compilation of edited radio broadcasts Ag Gospel Half Hour with Deaconess Victoria. It is made up of talks comprising of a wide range of topics under the direction of the Holy Spirit, presented from a biblical perspective, in a simple and balanced manner. It is our prayer that you will find encouragement, correction, God's direction and blessing as you listen to these talks over and over again. God bless you, and may heaven at last be the portion of us all. Amen. Greetings in Jesus' precious name. It is my privilege to be with you again today to share the word of God. This is Gospel Half Hour with Dickiness Victoria, and I pray that you will be blessed as you listen to the word of God. Please let us pray. Our Father and our Most High God, we thank you, Father, because you are ever willing to speak to us. Almighty God, we thank you for the privilege to hear your word again one more time. We thank you, Lord, because you talk to us through preachers. You talk to us through teachers. You talk to us through circumstances. You talk to us in our inner man. Sometimes you talk to us through dreams. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you above all for your word that is constantly speaking unto us. We ask for the grace to be wise men who will give heed to your word who will not neglect your word, but will feed our spirits with your word every day so that we might receive wisdom and grace and understanding to be the doers of it and not hearers only. Let Christ be formed in our hearts by faith. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. By the grace of God, we shall continue our talk today. Rewards of Faithfulness, Part 11. The Rewards of Faithfulness, Part 11. What is faithfulness? Faithfulness is defined as the quality of being loyal, steadfast, and reliable. Biblical faithfulness is based on trust in who God is, belief in His Word, a choice to fear Him, a choice to honor and revere Him, it is a choice to live in obedience to God's word as a lifestyle. Faithfulness is based on the fact that God loves us and we choose to reciprocate that love towards him by living for him daily. F meaning to say that faithfulness is not doing the right thing once in a while, but it is doing the right thing again and again and again. And the right thing is living in obedience to the word of God. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 3, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. It is actually a joy to keep his commandments. When people see the lifestyle of righteousness as boring, it is because they are looking through the lenses of the carnal nature. But the truth is that the highest form of fulfillment comes in knowing God through his son Jesus Christ, being filled with the Holy Spirit and walking in obedience to his ways. That is what gives your heart the highest kind of peace ultimately. Faithfulness is a commitment to please God our maker. It is also based on the knowledge that there is consequence to all our actions sooner or later. Everything we do has reward if good and judgment if wrong. And there are different categories of reward for different categories of achievement. And so when we are passionate about our work with God, about our commitment to our maker, then we are liable to produce more fruits in our lives and to achieve much more for God here on earth. And of course, be blessed with a greater reward at the judgment when we see God. Praise the Lord. Why is God so passionate about us being faithful? Let me answer that question using marriage as an example. No one wants to be married to a spouse who is not faithful. No one wants to marry a sexually immoral woman who can go out, become pregnant, and come back home and present it to the husband as his own. In like manner, no one wants a philandering man for a husband who will go out and waste resources meant for the family and not be committed to his family. A lack of commitment will bring suspicion into the marriage. 
a disloyalty in the lifestyle of any partners in a marriage will cause a lot of upheaval, will cause a lot of pain, will bring a lot of sorrow. It reflects a lack of love in the heart of a spouse who is unfaithful to his partner. And so such a relationship is not worth keeping for many people. And so disloyalty, unfaithfulness, adultery in marriage has caused a lot of marital separation. And separation, if not physical, can be psychological. In which case the partners are living together but in their hearts they are not in love with one another or committed to one another and this tends to affect the children negatively as well and that is why god wants us to be faithful towards him we cannot wear god's shirt and put on the devil's sandals the bible says that what agreement does light have with darkness what concord does the temple of god have with the temple of the devil or of belial god says if we are lukewarm neither hot nor cold he will spit us out of his mouth he would we were either hot or cold hot meaning that we are walking faithfully before god we are obeying his commandments we are walking in righteousness and we are looking forward to seeing him someday we are seeking god and seeking his word and when we are cold it means we are far from god we choose to do our own thing, to live unrighteously, to live in accordance with our will slash the will of the devil for us. And when we are lukewarm, these are people who, they want the best of both worlds. They want to serve God because they want to go to heaven. At the same time, they want to enjoy the world. In Luke chapter 12 verse 40 to 48, God categorizes these three groups of people. One, those who are faithfully serving him. These are people who will be blessed. They are doing his will, walking uprightly in holiness and bearing fruit unto eternal life. Two, those who know the word of God but are not living righteously before God because they want the best of both worlds, the kingdom of God and the ungodly pleasures of the world. The Bible says that these people will be beaten with many stripes, more stripes than the third group of people who are people who do not even know God at all and are living in sin. The Bible says these ones who do not know the will of the master of God and living carelessly as they will, will be beaten with few stripes. And so each man must decide which group he belongs to because there is no exception. When we look at the Old Testament, at the kings of Israel, we discover that each king was assessed at the end of his life and of his reign by the Almighty God as to whether he was in group one, those who were faithful towards God, or in group two, those who were neither here nor there, or group three, those who sinned and lived a lifestyle of idolatry outright. Now, let us look at one or two examples of those who lived godly before God. Hezekiah was one of the kings who lived a godly life before Almighty God. We read about him in 2 Kings chapter 18 from verse 1 to 8. And it says, Now it came to pass in the third year of Hoshea, the son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father David had done. He removed the high places and broke the sacred pillars, cut down the wooden image, and broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For until those days the children of Israel burned incense to it and called it Nehushtan. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor who were before him. 
for he held fast to the Lord, meaning he was faithful to the Lord. He did not depart from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord had commanded Moses. The Lord was with him, therefore. He prospered wherever he went, and he rebelled against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. He subdued the Philistines as far as Gaza and its territory from watchtower to fortified city. Praise the Lord. This is someone who truly served God faithfully. And he made it a point of duty to destroy idolatry in Israel. Just like today where the present church lives in the world where there is a lot of sin and unrighteousness and the tendency to be caught up in the ways of the world. So it was back then. The Israelites had been taken out of Egypt, which is symbolic of the Christian, of the church, being taken out of the slavery of sin in the world and brought into the land of Canaan, a land flowing with milk and honey. But in Canaan, Idolatry was the way of life before the Israelites arrived. God had said unto the Israelites, Serve me faithfully, wipe out idolatry, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. But human beings, being what they are, did not faithfully obey that commandment. Sometimes they will serve God faithfully, and at other times they will serve Baal, the spirit of Satan. But this king chose to serve God wholeheartedly, Hezekiah, and he destroyed all the items of worship of Baal in the land. And so God was with him. He prospered whithersoever he went. And also, he was able to rebel against the enemies of God, the enemies of his people. Just like a Christian today who is walking faithfully will be able to rebel against and conquer the rule of Satan and the manipulation of wickedness against his life. Praise the Lord. We see another example of a man who walked uprightly before God, and that was King David. And we read his story briefly in 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 5. And it says, David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and had not turned aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Praise the Lord. Someone said this is why he is very convinced that it was the Spirit of God who wrote the Bible and not just men. Because a man has the tendency to cover up his faults. Hardly will a man say that he walked uprightly before God, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Remember the story of Uriah the Hittite? King David had taken over this man's wife and organized his death, and it cost the anger of God, and for that God cursed him, even though he forgave him. Meaning to say that he suffered the consequences greatly here on earth, and so did his family. However, this sin will not be held against him in the judgment. Praise the Lord. And the final example is that of King Josiah. And we read his story in 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 1 and 2. And it says, Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedida, the daughter of Adiah of Boscath. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the ways of his father David. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. What a glowing testimony of God concerning a man. And notice here the reference to King David walking uprightly before God. In other words, David became the yardstick of righteousness and godly living. It is my prayer that at the end of our lives, when heaven summarizes the activities of our lives, because record is being kept day by day, that it will sound like this. He did what was right or she did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the ways of his father David, not turning aside to the right hand or to the left. Many a times we look at our friends or colleagues who are involved in crooked deals to make money or to get ahead in life. 
and they look at people who are not stealing to forge ahead or defrauding others to forge ahead people who are not hustling to make money but rather are making money through godly means and they say you are not fast you are dull and you are a jew guy don't listen if you are not making the money or moving ahead as fast as those who are compromising to get ahead in life at the end of the day the difference will show let us look for the riches of god for the bible says that the blessings of god maketh rich and he adds no sorrow to it if you knew what a lot of people go through in order to make some unclean money you would rather be where you are and trust god for his own timing praise god now let us look at one or two examples of people who lived ungodly and one of them was king abijam verse 1 of chapter 15 of the book of first king says in the 18th year of king jeroboam the son of nebat abijam became king over judah he reigned three years in jerusalem his mother's name was maka the granddaughter of abishalom and he walked in all the sins of his father which he had done before him his heart was not loyal to the lord his god example two jumping to verse 25 it says now nadab the son of jeroboam became king over israel in the second year of asa king of judah and he reigned over israel two years and he did evil in the sight of the lord and walked in the way of his father and in his sin by which he had made israel sin 27 then Basha, the son of Ahijah, of the house of Issachar, conspired against him, and Basha killed him at Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines, while Nadab and all Israel laid siege to Gibbethon. 28. Basha killed him in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his place. Praise the Lord. We see here examples of kings who did evil before God and promoted it in their realm. And when God says they did evil, they really did evil. Because as you study the word of God, you will discover that they oppressed the people and filled the land with murders and adulteries. They even went as far as sacrificing live babies and children by fire to the god Molech. And God was so disgusted with this that he said in his word, it never even crossed his mind to ask that children be offered to him in sacrifice. Praise the Lord. Again, this same Basha, who killed Nadab, in verse 33 we are told, in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, Basha the son of Ahijah became king over all Israel in Tirzah and reigned 24 years. He did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of Jeroboam and in his sin by which he had made Israel sin. Jeroboam was the one who introduced and concretized idolatry in the land of Israel by making calves, saying to the people of the land, these are your gods who brought you out of Egypt. And so just like David was a reference point for righteousness, Jeroboam was a reference point for idolatry, sin, and wickedness in the land. You see, after the death of King Solomon, there was civil rebellion early in the reign of his son Rehoboam. The nation of Israel was divided into northern Israel with capital in Samaria and southern Israel called Judah with capital in Jerusalem. Northern Israel went into idolatry at the instance of Jeroboam, but southern Israel continued to worship the Lord God Jehovah. About half the kings of Judah lived godly and the other half lived in ungodliness and idolatry, whilst all the kings of northern Israel were godless. They practiced idolatry. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 28 too, when a land is rebellious, it has many rulers. There was a lot of assassinations going on. Because when Satan is sitting in rule over a land, there is a lot of bloodshed. May God deliver us from wickedness in the name of Jesus. 
in Psalm 51 verse 5, we see that until Jesus Christ saves us, we are wicked. Our motives are wicked and we are ruled by carnality. We are ruled by the flesh and Satan is master of the flesh realm. And that is why it is important that each and every one of us should repent and give our lives to Christ and pray for the cleansing of our land, that wickedness be expunged from our land and righteousness rule in it. Praise the Lord. Let me give one last example of a king who walked in ungodliness. And let us remember that even though these examples are kings, they are examples for all men. And we find the story in 1 Kings 21, from verse 25 to 29. I mean, you cannot talk about bad rulers without talking about Ahab, because he was the icing on the cake. And verse 25 says, But there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to do wickedness in the sight of the Lord, because Jezebel, his wife, stirred him up. Verse 26 and he behaved very abominably in following idols, according to all that the Amorites had done, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. So it was when Ahab heard those words that he tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his body and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went about mourning. Now what are the words that Ahab heard? Because of his wickedness, God has sent the prophet Elijah to him, saying basically that he will wipe out the house of Ahab, and that any who died in the city will be eaten by dogs, and any who died in the fields will be eaten by wild animals. And so this wicked king repented. Now see the mercy of God. Verse 28, And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, See how Ahab has humbled himself before me. Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the calamity in his days. In the days of his son, I will bring the calamity on his house. Praise the Lord. Is any willing to repent? God says he will not reject the repentance of a sinner. But we do not have all of time to repent. Inasmuch as God is merciful, the fact that there are people in hell means that there is a limit to mercy. Let him that is wise take heed. Praise the Lord. And so let us look at those who want a bit of both worlds. Those who are neither here nor there. The 50-50 crowd who at the end of the day sadly will still lose everything. These are the ones who will say to God, But God, we casted out devils in your name. We spoke in tongues in your name. We fed the hungry in your name. And he will say to them, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. And so let him who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. An example we see in scriptures of someone who was sitting on the fence concerning his faith was Amaziah. Second Chronicles 25 says, Amaziah was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehodan of Jerusalem, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a loyal heart. But not with a loyal heart. Praise the Lord. You know, God does not just judge our actions and activities, but he judges our motives. Sometimes we try to do good before men because we want to be seen as being good people by men. We want the praises of men, just like King Saul. But God is more interested in our motives than our actions. Because if your motive is right, your action will be right. But if your motive is wrong, chances are that you are doing good works to glorify yourself and not to glorify God. Right motive is born out of love for men and a desire to honor, to worship and glorify God. Praise the Lord. And so it is very important to God that we live faithfully. God willing, we will summarize the rewards of faithfulness next time, for we have run out of time. However, if you want to give your life to Christ, 
I encourage you to please join me as we pray together now. Remembering that all we are doing, we will receive reward for if good or judgment if wrong. And so let us pray. Saying, Almighty God, I recognize that I am a sinner and have sinned against your word. Forgive me all of my sins, of lying, of cheating, of prayerlessness, of duping others, of involvement in pornography, of masturbation, of adultery, of fornication, of using hard drugs. Forgive me, Lord, all of my sins, whatever they are. I am sorry for them. And I repent from all my sins. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and make me a child of God. From today, I will live to please you. In Jesus' name, I reject sin. I reject the world. I reject the devil forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, the Bible says there is rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 who need no repentance. And I pray for you that the blood of Jesus will cover you, the hold of sin be broken over you, and grace be released upon you to live faithfully so that at the end of days, heaven will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. And now that you have given your life to Christ, you are born again. You have been born into the kingdom of God. For every man must be born twice if he is to see the kingdom of God. Firstly, to be born by human parents, which will qualify him or her to live here on earth. And secondly, to be born by the Spirit of God, which will qualify him or her to enter heaven. So I encourage you to begin to pursue after God from today, because God is the ultimate prize. And he it is who will usher us into heaven, into his presence. And you can do that by a daily lifestyle of prayer. I encourage you to start your day with prayer, end your day with prayer, find time to pray in the afternoon. After the model of Daniel 6 verse 10 and, and Psalm 55 verse 17. And in between, it is also okay to pray. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you. Two, I encourage you to read your Bible every day. You can start reading from the book of Matthew, reading it serially until you get to Revelations, the end of the New Testament, and then you can back up to Genesis chapter 1 in the Old Testament. If you spend about 20-25 minutes every day reading your Bible, chances are that you will finish your Bible in one year. Be deliberate about reading the Word of God. And when you read, please memorize at least one verse of scripture which you will ruminate over in your mind as you go through the day. That is keeping your heart stayed on the Word of God. Take time to meditate upon the Word of God. Because when you read the word of God, it's like eating. And when you meditate upon it, it's like digesting it. Because as a man thinks in his heart, the Bible says, so is he. What goes on within our hearts is what is expressed in our words and actions. And so read the word of God, memorize it, meditate upon it, and speak it. Deliberately confess the word of God over yourself. For example, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Sin will not have dominion over me. Masturbation cannot have dominion over me because I am a child of God. I have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. Gossip has, anger has no hold over me. For I have the spirit of self-control according to Galatians 5.22-23. You know, you, 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 you say these things over and over and over again until the word of God is established in your heart and established in your ways. Three, please get a Christian devotional booklet for your daily quiet time with God. 
and there are several available like our daily manner, our daily guide, open heavens, and so on. Four, I encourage you to join a godly Bible-believing church. Ask God to order your steps aright, and I'm sure he will. Be a worker there, and be a tither also as a believer. Ask God for the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And lastly, I encourage you to spend at least one day of the week fasting from morning till evening. Fasting will help to subdue the flesh and help to consecrate you more unto God Almighty. Praise the Lord. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at dickinessvictoria at gmail.com dickinessvictoria at gmail.com and you may wish to tune to our YouTube channel Gospel Half Hour with Dickiness Victoria Timothy in order to listen to more messages. God bless you. God loves you. Until I come your way next time, keep being faithful to God. That is the best way to invest your life. Amen.